He's got to play from behind the entire football game. So he's going to probably get his guys try to relax a little bit here on this first series. Varner, Skipper, and Johnson on the line for the Grambling Tigers, and it looked like that I thought incomplete. that ball was yeah. Chapman trying to get the ball off the ground. The transfer from Northwest Mississippi Community College, a native of Jackson. Champion, of course. Trying to get the ball. It's incomplete, and it'll bring up second down and 10 for Northwestern. The ball at the 27-yard line. 7 to nothing. our score. 13-48 remaining here in this first half of play. Linebackers for Grambling, Hodges, Christmas, and Hatter. And here is the give to the running back. And boy, great pursuit by Grambling. And number 20, Chris Jones, the Tyler Town, Mississippi native, had nowhere to go. And that's a loss of eight yards and third down and long coming up for, North, uh, for Northwestern. I was going to say, give a lot of credit to the defensive front because they did a great job of being able to penetrate those gaps immediately, Santoria, cutting off any running lanes that the running backs wanted for Northwestern on that last play and then a great job of pursuing by the Grambling Titans. That'll bring a third down and long here for the Grambling Tigers. Tigers right now trying to hold Northwestern first down for the Demons on, in the open field to Bobby Chan Chan who not only had 77 receiving yards last week, but also threw for a touchdown. I tell you what, one of the things that he did very well right there, Santoria, he found an open area and was able to get into that zone and was able to get a first down for the Northwestern State University. Demons grambling, broken coverage that time, kind of lost him as he ran right up the sink. And that will make it a uh, first down and 10 for Northwestern State University. The ball resting at their own 45-yard line. 7 to nothing is our score. Tigers on top. Man in motion right now. Here is the quarterback for Northwestern. Back to pass, looking over the middle. Wide open That's is uh, number 85, and that is going to be Cameron Lazar, the 5'11 senior from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Lazar was wide open that time, Santoria. Good job that time by the quarterback, Sidney making a pretty decent throw. If he still gets that ball out a little bit further in front of him, he might be still running. First down and 10 for Northwestern. Man in motion right now is Morgan from right to left. Three receivers set. Here is the give. It's time to the running back. That's going to be Malik, I should say Chris Jones, the senior from Southwest Mississippi Community College. And that'll bring up a second down and nine situation for the Grambling Tigers. Seven to nothing our score. Tigers striking first. Percy Cargo did a very good job of being able to fill those gaps. Only a one yard pickup off of the right side of that offensive line for the running back for Northwestern. Single receiver to the near side. Is the gift Grambling doing a great job 
in that initial pursuit and what you're seeing the Tigers doing uh, right there Chris Jones on the stop I should say with the run the Grambling defense doing a great job of getting penetration they are the defensive front right now is doing an amazing job of being able to penetrate those gaps get where they're supposed to now here's the problem in a passage rush situation, they're not getting there quick enough, and he's got all day to sit there and pick up part your defense. Got to do a better job of getting there on the pass rush. Got to bring up second down and about 13 yards to go. And that's like right there. It's a fumble on the play, and let's see who came up with it. Looks like the Tigers may have come up with the football. And they did. And the Tigers come up with it. A host of Tigers jumping on the pile, grambling with the football. Now, that was absolutely a fumble. His arm was not going forward. If, they, if Northwestern State chooses to replay it, because you can replay here now at Grambling. If they choose to replay it, they're going to lose it because that he was not throwing that ball. That was a fumble. Great pursuit, finally, by the Grambling defense. Absolutely. The defensive line did a good job of being able to get in those gaps. And when you can send more people than they can just handle up front, that's usually what's going to happen for you. Or there's a breakdown in protection and coverage. Good job that time by the Grambling State University Tigers. We have a timeout on the field with the score. The Grambling Tigers, seven Northwestern State, nothing. We'll take this one minute timeout. One minute, we'll be right back. As we look around this beautiful stadium tonight, one of our significant improvements is the brand new video board from NEVCO. Understanding the importance of relationships, NEVCO Director of Business Development, Mr. Brad Brown, is presenting $10,000 in scholarship funding to support students studying in mass communication. Joining Mr. Brown on the field today are GSU President Richard Gallagher, Dr. Ellen Smiley, GSU Provost and Vice President of Academic Affairs. Let's give them a NEVCO round of applause for a spirit invention. Welcome back here to Eddie G. Robinson Memorial Stadium where the Tigers are on top of the Demons 7 to nothing. a momentary stoppage of play. Will the band please cease playing when the offense approaches the football? And they're telling the band to make sure that they stop playing when the offense approaches the football. So we're starting that again. First down and 10 for the Tigers. Slot they, to the near side. They said they were going to start enforcing that a little bit they more did. this year. Kincaid gets the ball out to the wide receiver. That is going to be Jordan Jones still on his feet. And the tight end gets across the 30 to about the 35-yard line. That's going to be close to a first down. They say he's out of bounds at about the 30 or 32. I'll tell you what, Jordan Jones did an outstanding job right there, Santoria, making that little catch in the flat zone area and picking up about seven yards. Here's a give. Martez Carter with the football. And Carter comes up oh, limping. Oh, no. Oh, no. He comes up limping as he goes out of bounds at about the 40-yard line. Now, the hope is that it was the same thing that it was last week with Martez Carter, which was cramps. He had a really bad cramp, as a matter of fact, last week, and they had to take him to the side, uh, take him to the locker room. Carter coming to the sideline, and we'll try to find out what's going on. And, of course, Miss V, right there, the trainer looking at him. He came up limping, and we'll see what happens. Here's first down and 10, and a run right in the open field. Great job by the offensive line. Is that Brooks? That's going to be Flowers. Oh, wow. The Sherry of Flowers gets a first down for the Tigers. Slot to the far side, one receiver to the near side. The wide side of the field is the far side. It was a little fake on the swing pass, and the give once again to the uh, near side of the field. And that's Flowers on the carry. And, you know, Coach Fox talked about the three-headed monster here for the Grambling Tigers at the running back position. And I tell you what, Flowers has done a very good job right here running the football, very effective. He's running behind his pads. 
He's putting his shoulder down when he needs to to get that little extra pop. This is a pretty good unit of backs to have if you're here at Grambling State. Here is Martez Carter back to pass. He'll take off with the football going to the near far side. Still on his feet going deep, trying to find someone in the end zone. It is incomplete. Ooh, I nice don't, job. I don't, I don't, that's, these are the times that I have to wonder sometime about Devontae Kincaid. Take the first down, keep your drive going. Those are the types of plays that you don't need to do. You don't have to force things. And it seemed like last year that there were periods late in the year where he wanted to do that. He wanted to force and make things happen that weren't there. Just take what the defense gives you. And looking on the sideline, Martez Carter trying to walk it off, but still limping noticeably. Devontae Kincaid scrambling with the football, now going down the field. Nice pass over the defender. Complete. <laughs> That's improvising right there. That's making something happen when nothing is there. Good job that time by Devontae Kincaid to fake everything out. And looking down the field and then reverses field, Santoria gets his shoulder square. Touch pass. Nice job. First down, Grambling. Devontae Davis on the catch. He'll now go to the far side of the field. Slot to the far side with... A tight end to the near side. Here is the give. Looks like Flowers once again running over a defender at the 10 down to the five-yard line. Tell you what, on that particular play, the guy that took the bulk of that but made the tackle, Santoria, was Ryan Reed for Northwestern State University. Comes up from that cornerback position or safety position, stepping down, took on that running back. Big tackle. Kincaid with the football, 7-4 remaining here in the first half. Here's the give, and Northwestern State did a good job with pursuit down to the four-yard line. 6.56 remaining in the first quarter. 7-0 is our score. And I tell you what, Ossie, one of the things that you have to be impressed with so far with this offense is they are moving the football, and that's one of the things that they had a hard time doing against Tulane. And they're moving the ball with efficiency right now, Santoria. They're doing a very good job of staying within the game plan that Coach Fives wants for his offensive unit at this particular point in this game. First down and First down and 10. I should say a third down and goal, rather. Here's a give wide open. That's Flowers. He runs over a defender, gets down to about the one-yard line. And Flowers now the featured back right now. Carter looks like he is uh, walking some things off, and he's trying to uh, get himself together to try to get back into the ball game. Still limping a little bit and could have been cramps uh, for Martez Carter. Tell you what, it didn't look good. No, it didn't. The way he came up, it, it really didn't look good at first. Good. Fourth in the goal, Orozco getting ready to come on to kick for the Grambling Tigers to try to extend this lead to 10 to nothing. Here's a snap, the hold is down, the kick is up, and it is good. Five forty-four remaining in the first quarter. We'll take this one minute timeout, this one minute timeout. The Grambling Tigers now on top. 10 to nothing over the Northwestern State Demons. We'll take this one minute timeout. And now a message from Barnes and Noble and Green Clinic. We'll be right back. Ballard says Martez is fine. Gotcha. Okay. He wouldn't specify exactly what it was. I said, is it cramps? He said, ah. he wouldn't specify. That's but he says break. Martez what time? What time? is fine. 6.15. Welcome back here to Eddie G. Robinson Memorial Stadium where the Grambling Tigers 
are on time by the score of 10 to nothing over the Northwestern State Demons as we get ready for the kickoff from Mark Orozco. And, you know, he's an interesting story, Ossie, because, you know, you, when you think about Mark Orozco, the year that he had to step away from football to take care of his dad, who was really sick, it really said a lot about his character. And, you know, I talked to Coach Fowles about it, and one of the things that he said is that he really he sacrificed an entire year, but when he was ready to come back, Coach Fowles says, you got a spot on this team. And, and you know what? Anybody that can sacrifice an entire year Santoria to take care of their father, that's the type of person you want on your football team. It tells you what type of man he really is. And here's a kickoff, and it comes to Northwestern State and a run back by Xavier Bell all the way up to about the 40-yard line, and it's going to be Xavier a first Bell down for return. Northwestern State. A good return there for Xavier right Bell. And, you know, when you look at the game against Louisiana Tech last weekend, you know, Northwestern State struggled in the second half, especially or in the first half, especially in the second quarter. As you can see this uh, run back on, if you're watching the YouTube channel, Xavier Bell did a great job of cutting back to the outside, and the only person that could give chase in that instance was Quentin Geis, who eventually got the tackle. Man in motion now for Northwestern State, and that's going to be Chapman. Here is the give, and nothing doing there really on first down. Maybe a half a yard gain by the Demons, and it'll bring up second down and about 10. I think it's Brandon Vaughn that made the tackle for the Grambling State University Tigers. Did a very good job of staying low, getting underneath those pads, and making the tackle after possibly a one yard pickup. They'll call it second down and nine here for the Grambling Tigers. 5.06 remaining in the first half, first quarter of play. 10 to nothing is our score. Here's a snap, quarterback back to pass for Northwestern State, and it is complete. A great job by the defense in order Christmas right there, along with, uh, look like Percy Cargo. That's number 85. That's right at the marker. That was DeMonte Johnson, as a matter of fact, that was on the tackle with uh, Darius Christmas. And it'll be, is it second and one maybe? A third and one rather? Third and Ooh, not even one. Not one. Third down and one. All right, fans, let's make some noise for your team and defense. Grambling will have to put on a nice dose of pressure to stop this. Oh, absolutely. Here is the give, and it's going to be a first down give by the quarterback to Chris Jones. And, you know, you look at the quarterback, J.D. Allman, for Northwestern State. Cramps of his own, and he's played pretty decently so far. Oh, so far he's been actually pretty good in this football game, but despite the fumble. Yeah. That's the only bad play he's had in this football game is the fumble so far. Last week, Northwestern State, they scored – Two touchdowns in the third quarter against uh, Louisiana Tech and shut out in the fourth quarter while allowing three touchdowns. And here is Almond swing pass, and that's going to be out to Bobby Chan Chan, who gets about four yards, and it'll be second down and six. We talked about Chan Chan, and I talked to Patrick Netherton, and when he said that he has the ugliest throw in the history of football, but it is so effective because the ball gets there. Hey, that's all that really matters at the end of the day. That's what you wanted to do. You just wanted to get there. Get there, get it to you guys, get them in space, and let them work. We'll go down on the field to Nick Harrison here in just a second. Here is J.D. Allman. Oh, and a tip, and the ball was caught by one of the Northwestern State backs, it looks like. Pass is caught by one of the Northwestern backs. That's number 21. Is that Jared West? Johnny yes. Jared West gets a first down after the ball was tipped and then, of course, came down in his hands. Of course, Jared West is the 5'10 running back from New Orleans, went to Brother Martin High School. Talk about a... Also a powerhouse. Yeah, talk about a big program. I believe they're going to play Bastrop at some point this year. That will be a huge matchup. Here's Allman. The give to the running back that's going to be number 20, Chris Jones, and he stopped after a gain of about four or five yards on the carry. And now a defensive personnel change here for the Grambling Tigers. They're going to bring in, it looks like, uh, Caleb Wells, the senior from Portland, Oregon. 
Slot to the near side, one receiver to the far side. Here's J.D. Allman, back to pass, looking, going down the sideline. This is going to be a tight throw, and it's just incomplete. Just missed him, too, San Antonio. When I tell you, he had a step on the defender, just put him in a bad spot that time. Three-step drop, set his feet, threw it down the sideline, just out of bounds. Going to bring up a uh, third down, and here's the toss. It's complete. It's a screen pass, and it's going to be complete to uh, Chapman, the wide receiver from Jackson, Mississippi. And that's a first down for Northwestern State. Yeah, good job that time by Carter getting over there for the Grambling State University to make that tackle again. Get your better guys in open down. space. That's what you want to do. And Northwestern has a couple of guys like Chan Chan that can get open and open space and make you pay for it. Double slot formation. Allman in the shotgun calling for the ball. Here is the give to the running back. It's going to be uh, Jared West. Gets uh, across the 20 to about the 24-yard line. Number 93, Rodney. There's nothing special the about what they're doing. This is just... Powered inside, powered inside, powered inside, powered inside. Eventually, you figure that there's going to be a pull off of this somewhere. Some kind of run pass option can come off of this. Slot, double slot formation. Wide side is the far side. Here's Allman going to back to the other side, and that's going to go to the tight end. It's going to be number uh, 85, Cameron Lazar. And, uh, of course, Lazar got nowhere as a Grambling defense against something that the defensive coaches said, making sure they're paying attention to their assignments. That's right. You're lining up in the right spot. You're going as fast as you can to the football, and you know what's coming based upon that particular formation that you see. That'll bring up a first down. Oh, that'll be the end of the quarter. Eight seconds remaining here. Ten to nothing is our score. We will take a timeout here. Our end of the first quarter break, which is going to be brought to you by First National Bank. Don't forget First National Bank, proud supporters of Grambling State University Athletics. We'll take this one-minute timeout. One minute. We'll be right back. Grambling State University is proud of the support that it receives from This is only a 30. Just add another 30. You got that one? Okay. Jones our president's circle of donor of the game for their long-standing support of Grambling State University. Joining Mr. and Mrs. Jones on the field is GSU President Richard Gallo and Mark Newman, Vice President of Institutional Advancement. Let's give them a huge round of applause. Prof, we're going to come down to you uh, to start the second quarter, okay? In honor of Military Appreciation Day, we would like to take time out to recognize our service members from the various branches. Welcome back here to Eddie G. Robinson Memorial Stadium, the Grambling Tigers on top of Northwestern State University, 10 to nothing. As we get ready to start the second quarter, we want to remind you that you can make a donation to Grambling State University and do your part by texting the word Graham, G-R-A-M, to 50155. With your donation, you can help out with scholarships, capital campaign projects, and much, much more. Don't forget, you can text the word Graham to 50155 to make your donation today. When you take a look at these first quarter stats, I'll see what sticks out here. Grambling has uh, not had won the time of possession battle, but they have definitely won the uh, battle on the scoreboard, as well as uh, they've been moving the ball pretty effectively. 12 plays, 139 yards. That, that's pretty good, Santorio. When you start looking at where it is. And let's see, did they give him a touchdown? 
They gave him the touchdown on the play. That was a give to the left side. And that was going to be uh, Chapman. And Chapman puts Northwestern on the board for six. And pretty decent throw that time. Put it in the back of the end zone. No way anybody was able going to get to that one besides the Northwestern State University offensive player comes up with it. Touchdown, Northwestern State. Talk about the uh, close proximity of these schools, only a little over 80 miles apart. Last time uh, that these, I should say the three previous times, Grambling has uh, taken the two to one advantage. And I think, I think Grambling is uh, challenging the ruling on the field of a touchdown. Well, if they do challenge, they'll come to the sideline and they're trying to get an idea and that's exactly what's going to happen here. And here's something that you don't see too often, a challenge. Because it, there was a question about whether or not he was in bounds uh, when he caught the ball in the back of the end zone or if he had control oh. of the ball. That's a good question and whether or not he had control of the football. Because if you, you know, he, if he didn't have control of the football, didn't complete the process, and they're sending the players back out, so it looks like they're not going to challenge. Well, what they did was basically the officials, the officials, uh, they can call upstairs and say, hey, this happened or that happened and be done with it. Just that quick? Yeah, just that quick. Ugh. As far as I know. Eric And on for the extra point try for... Northwestern State. The kick is up. Here's Pachoni, and the kick is good. Yes, it's good. 10-7 now our score. The Grambling State University Tigers are on top. We'll take a one-minute timeout. Now this break from Origin and our good friends at Nissan. Nissan, proud supporter of College Athletic Shop. Choose Nissan.com. Take on today. Here is a one-minute timeout. We'll be right back. Tickets for the Chicago Classic, the State Fair Classic, and Bayou Classic are all on sale at the GSU Ticket Office. Log on to www.gsutigers.com or call 318-274-2526 to purchase your tickets today. Tigers with the football. Tigers with the football. They return it up to about the 25-yard line. Salmon with the return on the play. 10-7 is the score. 14-44 remaining here in this uh, first half of play from here at Eddie G. Robinson Memorial Stadium. And you know, honestly, I talked to a couple of people who have been long supporters of this university, and they said it's just a great day to be able to see a jumbotron, to see a new field like this, to get, you know, really being able to see these things. Here is the give to, looks like, Martez Carter, and he gets across the 25 to about the 28-yard line. And, you know, there's certain people that um, really wanted to see this happen that are no longer with us, that passed yeah. away. But uh, And I think those are some of the people that, you know, I was talking to a few alums, they got a little emotional because they said, you know, some of their friends who they wanted to see this day when this first started and when this, the idea first came about. And I remember when that happened. And so they were just like, it, they really wish that some of their friends who could see that today. Here is Kincaid back to pass, going deep, trying to find an open man. And it is incomplete. Boy, talk about a juggling act between Sonye from Northwestern State and the receiver from Grambling. Yeah, that time that ball was a little behind the receiver. The defensive back that time for Northwestern State University was able to get a hand on it and then almost recovered that time by the Grambling offensive man. Salmon was the intended receiver. Talk about concentration. 
Here is Kincaid, back to pass, cross the 20, 25, 30. He'll get the first down, and he did exactly what you should do there. He pulled it down, took off with the football, and gets the first down to about the 38. Keep your drive alive. That's what you do when you're quarterbacking a football team. The most important thing is, as long as you have the football, you have an opportunity to score. So you want to preserve that at all right. You got to treat it like it's a million dollars in your hand. Absolutely. That'll bring up a first down and 10. Here is the give up the middle. Now back over to the right side to about the 45 yard line. Game about six or seven on that play. That's good running right there. That's a good job up front. Martez because, caught on the carry. Martez yeah, those, those, those big guys carry. up front are doing an excellent job running the ball off of the right side of that offensive line that time. And look how many white jerseys it takes to bring down old Martez Carter. He's not uh, an easy guy to bring down at all. You think he's small in stature, but boy, he has some strong legs and knows how to power those legs forward. Double slot formation now for the Tigers. Here on second down and three. Here is the fake, the fake on the gift. Lindemann Brooks gets the catch across the 50 to about the 44, and that's another Tiger first down. Tell you what, here's a young man that can definitely be a game changer for the Grambling State University Tigers, Lindemann Brooks. He ran a couple of plays last year for Grambling State University, showed you his ability to be able to score quickly. Here's a give to Martez Carter, eludes a tackler, 45-40, still on his feet, goes out of bounds at about the 42-yard line, made something out of nothing there in about a five- or six-yard game. Boy, that's when you take in uh, and make chicken salad out of, the, out of the best of nothing right there, my friend. What did he make chicken salad out of? The best of uh, nothing. That, I don't know if that's how the saying goes. Oh, well, you, well, you, you, I can't say, you know, you take the <laughs> walnuts and you take the... But that's the best I could do today. Here is the uh, give once again to Martez Carter. 30 inside the 30 to about the 27-yard line. And that's another first down for the Grambling Tigers. And they are, as one of our former colleagues said, methodically moving the ball down the field in this particular drive. And it's like a Novocaine almost. I was just about to say, I hadn't heard Lanny James in many years, Santori. And when you brought that up, that's exactly what it made me think about, just moving the ball methodically down the football field. The Grambling doing a pretty good job right now of controlling the pace. Trips to the near side. Devontae Kincaid in the shotgun. Will pull the ball down himself. Now gets the ball out to the big tight end. I believe that's going to be uh, Devontae Davis, rather, the wide receiver. Goes out of bounds. I believe that's the first down. That's it's going to be that's close. They're going to say he's a little bit short. Are they call going to call a call out? No, no, no. I think they're going to call holding. Oh. An eligible, eligible man downfield. Down that cost him five yards, and I'll have to replay first down. And normally, when you have an ineligible man down the field, you normally catch linemen doing that. But every once in a while, you catch maybe a tight end or something like that. Well, the, this probably linemen because it's a run pass option, Santoria, yeah. where Kincaid could either hand it off or he could have thrown it a little quicker. Here's Kincaid from the shotgun, swings the ball out to Flowers across the 30, 25, and out of bounds at about the 24-yard line, and that will be a close, uh, oh, still a few yards shy of a first down. Yeah, still going to be about, uh, give or take, 9 or 10 yard shot. But again, I like the fact that Grandma's trying to get out on the perimeter. They're trying to get one-on-ones against the Northwestern defensive backs. And this one is caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Grambling State University. What a catch by number 17, Darrell Clark, the junior from Warren Eastern High School in New Orleans. Tell you what, he did a very good job of running that corner route, Santoria. Set him up, roll to the right, and then throw it all the way backside, back to the left. Had a step on the defender that time for Northwestern State University. And Grambling was able to put in an easy six points. 16-7 now the score. Tigers on top. 11-03 remaining in the first half of play. Timeout charge to the Tigers here. 
16-7 our score and before the extra point they decide to take a timeout but we'll keep it right here we'll take the break after the uh, extra point here just want to remind you that coming up next week the Grambling State University Tigers will take on Jackson State University and there's that pass once again That's by Devontae Kincaid. You talk about touch. Beautiful touch. Right in front of and, the defender. And, and the willingness of Clark to sell out and go get the ball. Exactly. He laid out for that pass, gave himself up in order to get that touchdown. Great pass, but excellent point of receiving by the young man from Warren Easton. Well, one of the things that we want to talk about, if you have been watching this game, we'll talk about this as soon as the uh, extra point try has happened here. We're going to tell you about a scholarship that was presented here today. Uh, here is the extra point try. It is up. It is good. Time out on the field with the score. The Grambling Tigers now on top by the count of 17-7 to 7 over Northwestern State. We'll take a one-minute timeout. One minute, you're listening to the Grambling Sports Radio Network. Hey, a prof. Yeah. Is Rasheed Rashawn coming up here, or is he going to be down there? He's down here already. Okay. Was it already scheduled for him to be, have an interview at halftime? Yeah, Mark Newman told me that we possibly would be doing it. I just didn't know if he was going to be down there or up here. Yeah, I just asked him. That worked out beautiful. Like, I saw him, and I just asked him. He's like, yeah, I can do it, so I'll just do it down here. Do you see uh, Mark Newman down there? Uh, I don't even know who that is. I'm not even going to lie to you. Okay. What does it look like? White guy, black guy? What? Hold on one second. Welcome back here to Eddie G. Robinson Memorial Stadium here on the campus of ye old Grambling State University located in the Piney Hills of North Louisiana. The Grambling Tigers are on top 17 to 7. I talked to my good friend who does a, a radio show down in Baton Rouge on uh, uh, Carlos Brown and told me today, admitted, confessed, he had never been to Grambling and Rusty. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. I said we, we have got to talk and have a come to Jesus meeting. Here's a kickoff. To Northwestern State coming down is that's going to be number two Xavier Bell and he is going to be wrapped up inside the 20 there's a flag down at about the 10 yard line we'll check that flag and the Tigers they are really gaining momentum here there's a block in the back against Northwestern State that's going to happen right at about the 11 yard line so it's going to move the demons all the way back inside of the, about the five yard line yeah, you know what? Uh, one of the things that's gonna that uh, had hurt Grambling last week was the penalties, and this time, you know, you can't put yourself in position where you are getting those kinds of penalties. You know, you look and at that's, the, and that's one of those senseless penalties. Yep. You look at that game last weekend against uh, Northwestern State University. They uh, against uh, Louisiana Tech, they had eight penalties for 54 yards last weekend. They've already got a couple here today. And again, you're talking about a football team that scrapped and fought with everything in them last week against um, Tech. Vaughn was in motion. Here's a give and nothing doing. I think that Northwestern State barely got back to the line of scrimmage. They, if, if they did, they didn't get much more than that, said to argue. Yeah, Varner on the stop there for... Northwest or for the uh, Grambling Tigers on your radio Northwestern going from right to left Tigers going from left to right and uh, now Northwestern State backed up deep in their own territory trips now to the far side which is the wide side of the field one receiver to the near side here's JD Allman back to pass and you get a swing pass out is complete that's going to be Chapman the wide receiver and he gets out to about the 20 or about the 17 yard line. That's enough for a first down. Yeah, again, nothing fancy about what they're trying to do. They're trying to push screen, a bubble screen out to the wide receivers one on ones and let them work against the grambling defensive backs.
Here's the swing pass outside. Northwestern State, 30, 35, out near the 40-yard line. And that uh, was the number eight. And that's going to be Jalen Watson, the junior from Long Beach City. Yeah, Jalen Watson did a good job. Again, Northwestern's not doing anything fancy at this particular point. They're just trying to get back into the rhythm of this game. Percy Cargo on the stop for the Grambling Tigers. Demon first down at the 37, make that the 38-yard line. 9.30 remaining here in this first half of play. Tigers right now on top, 17-7 to over Northwestern State. Santoria Black along with Ossie Clark here on the Grambling Sports Radio Network. Want to thank all of our listeners on the Peach 99.3 and, of course, on Magic 97. Here is J.D. Allman complete once again. And that, again, is going to be um, Jalen Watson. He was wide open, Ossie, at least four yards in front of the defender. Well, I tell you what, he, he just sat down. Good pass, good route, good throw, and defender was there to rally up afterwards, but it's still a first down. Too many. Gramley got it back across the line. Here's a give up the middle. This is what hurt them against Tulane last weekend. Nice misdirection, and the carry by Chris Jones gets Northwestern another first down. We saw this last weekend against North uh, against Tulane where the little bit of misdirection Jones comes back to the middle of the field and picks up the first down trips to the far side for Northwestern that's the wide side one receiver to the near side and that's going to be Jalen Watson JD Allman the quarterback here's the give and this time the Grambling Tiger defense wraps up was that the runner Christmas the first one there it was and then of course Jones was the Running back there on the carry. Now coming back into the ball game for Northwestern State is going to be Jared West, the sophomore from New Orleans. I'd like to see what would happen if Grambling would roll down and, and, and play maybe a little press coverage. So right now everything is four high. Looks like trips to the far side, almost like a wing back out there. It's tied in really. Here is J.D. Allman, escapes pressure, going down the field, and it's incomplete. Wow, he overthrows the receiver and throws it into the kicking net on the Northwestern sideline. I mean, overthrew his receiver pretty good ways, probably about, about 10, 12 yards out of bounds that time, but that pressure will do that to you. Had to step up out of that pressure, roll to the right, close to the Northwestern sideline, and just wanted to make sure he got that ball out of his hand. Now, here's the bad thing. It's a third down and 10. Linwood Banks and Brandon Varner come back into the ball game on defense for the Grambling Tigers. Here on third down and 10, four receivers set, trips to the wide side. That's the far side, one receiver near side. Here's J.D. Allman back to pass, rolling back out to the right. He's giving chases to Grambling defense. Allman throwing, and it's incomplete. Well, I tell you what, he heard the footsteps as he was running out of bounds. He sure did. He was trying to get out of that pressure that was coming. Grambling kind of cross blitzed that time up front. And I tell you this, Allman is looking for this receiver that's going down the left sideline for the past two plays. Great coverage on the outside by the secondary on these past two plays to keep him in check and make him try to check down for other receivers, giving the defensive line and the front seven chance to pursue. Field goal coming up. Here is the kick. It's up, and it is no good. just missed short. Just missed. When I say just missed it, I'm talking about mm, missed. Look, that it looks like an it inch was, away from the bar. Was that Austin Fendrick or Eric Pis uh, Pisson? I think that was Fendrick who was on the kick. And he misses that one just barely. That was a 50-plus yard field goal. I think that was Pis uh, Piquion. Well, this is a military appreciation day here on the campus of Grambling State University. And one of the things that we had a chance to witness before the game was a flyover. And, of course, they came from Barksdale Air Force Base. They also honored veterans on the field, President Rick Gallo, along with Athletic Director Paul Bryan, honoring veterans on the field, thanking them for their service and uh, what they've been able to do to help uh, this country. And we talk about people who help this country. We often talk about wars and things, but sometimes we're not even talking about wars against other countries, but just helping out people when you look at what the National Guard 
did with Hurricane Harvey and now what they're about to do with Hurricane Irma in Florida. I was just about to say, the, in the greatest war sometimes, Santoria, are the things that are going on within our own communities at that particular time. Man in motion right now for Grambling. Here is the give. That looks like it's Lindemann Brooks. Gets across the uh, 35 Lindemann to Brooks about the 40. The and that was uh, Ladanian Brooks. 5'9", sophomore from Austin, Texas. And that'll bring up second down and about eight yards to go. 7.15 remaining in the ballgame. 17-7 is our score. Grambling Tigers with the lead. Here's a snap. Here's the keeper by Kincaid, and he gets right back to about the line of scrimmage. That's just about all third down and long. Good job by the time by the Northwestern State University Demons. They weren't fooled at all. Everybody was in their proper places that time, Santoria. They were in the position to make that tackle on Devontae Kincaid. They didn't let him get his shoulder square and back up to the line of scrimmage. Third down and long for Grandpa. Double slot formation. The wide side. It's balls in the middle of the field, as a matter of fact. Here's Kincaid back to pass looking, and it is complete. That's going to be number 17, Darrell Clark, still on his feet into Northwestern State Territory at the 39-yard line. First down, Tigers. Good job that time by Darrell Clark. Wide open that time, makes a great catch, and then puts on a little nifty move here at the end, Santoria. Going to put on a move on the defensive back, cut back inside, and then try to wrestle to get a few more. Got to love that kid. Double slot formation, ball sitting on the near hash. Here is the give to Martez Carter. Carter trying to escape pressure, gets to about the 35-yard line, gain of about three or four on the play, and that'll bring up a second down here for the Grambling Tigers. Want to thank those from Nevco, uh, understanding the importance of relationships. The Nevco Director of Business Development, Mr. Brad Brown, presented a $10,000 scholarship fund to help students studying in mass communications uh, to help them operate and do things with this big big new scoreboard. So thanks to Nevco for their generous gift. Here is King wow. Carter, should say Did Martez you see Carter. That? You see him leap over the defender Did and then get to about the 32, 33 yard line. And it's going to be about two or three yards shy of a first down. And now coming back into the ball game for the Grambling Tigers is going to be Desherius Flowers. You don't see deer jump across the highway like that. See, with the way that he went out of the game in the first quarter, you don't think that he would be doing stuff like that. And he did. He sure is. He's he is definitely Mr. Electricity. Kincaid back to pass, now scrambling back to the near side. Kincaid gets across the 35-30 to about the 25-yard line. He'll have enough for a first down. The line judge says he's out of bounds at about the 23-22 yard line, and the Tigers have a first down. Let me, let me tell you, just from my vantage point on the sidelines, fantastic job by Kincaid. Body control. As soon as he was getting to the sideline, instead of running out of bounds, he straightened himself up, tiptoed down the sidelines to get just enough for the first down. And once again, here's a give to Flowers, it looks like. And that's going to be a flag that's thrown in the middle of the pile by the uh, referee. And it was thrown about tw uh, 15, 20 yards away. Yeah. It's going to be probably holding. Hold here. Holding. Yep. 57 on the offense. 10-yard penalty, first down. Yeah, that's going to be uh, Timis. Uh, I should say it's going to be uh, Keith Johnson. The redshirt sophomore from uh, Dallas, Texas. And so the Tigers, they were in business, and now they have to back up 10 yards, and it'll be second down and 20 with the ball resting at about the 30-yard line. 17-7 our score, four and a half remaining here in this first quarter, or first half of play. Four receivers set once again for the Grambling Tigers. Martez Carter in the flat now. Here is Kincaid. He'll escape pressure. He gets uh, across the 30, still on his feet. And he's dragged down by his jersey at about the 27, 28-yard line. And now the head linesman will throw a flag. And that flag, I think, is going to be on Grambling. Yeah, it looks like the Kincaid was a little ticked off there. As well he should have been. After he was already tackled, another guy from Northwestern came down and hit him while he was already on the ground. But there's no call for that. 
Let's see who the uh, foul is going to go against here. Could go either way. Mm -hmm. Back to the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct against Grambling. It's a 15-yard penalty against Grambling, so it goes against the Tigers there. And that will put Grambling in deeper, ter deeper trouble there. And instead of second and 18, you're looking at about second and 33 now. I know you're supposed to keep your emotions in check in a situation like that, but he was defenseless on the ground, and another Northwestern player came in with his helmet and hit him. He was dragged down like a cabbage patch doll and then nailed to the cross. Yeah. So I kind of understand where he's coming from. I mean, I know you're supposed to keep your emotions in check, but come on, man. Brooks now what coming up? in the ball game. It's going to be a five-receiver set now. It's going to time out now by the Grambling Tigers because they couldn't get the personnel right in the clock was about to hit zeros. But here's the other thing, gentlemen, that you have to remember. In a game of this magnitude and you have the football in your hands, you're in control of your actions. We'll and take so a, We're going to take a timeout on the field here real quick with the score of the Grambling Tigers on top 17 to 7. We'll take this 1 minute timeout. 1 minute timeout. This word from the State Fair Classic featuring Grambling and Prairie View A&M University coming up the first weekend of October. We'll take this timeout. We'll be right back. Hey, um, okay, Prof. You? So we'll do Rashid Rashawn first. Okay. I think that uh, the AD is supposed to do an interview up here, but I know he's got a presentation on the field. If, when you're doing, you know, maybe you might be able to do both unless you want me to do it. He may come up here, but I'm looking at timing. Yeah. And him trying to schlep up here, take the elevator, it might be easier to do the interview down there. Yeah. So basically we just want to make sure we talk about, you know, field improvements, things in the you know, going yeah. on, other, that kind of stuff. Right. What party is going to after the game? Yeah, all that stuff. What is life and he doing the bedroom? No. No? Okay. KK's pass is complete. Field an incomplete pass. Really on the field, an incomplete pass here by the Grambling State Pace University Tigers. Complete. I don't think you draw them up third and 27. No. I just don't think you draw them up that way. Another timeout. And there's going to be another timeout. This one, I think, by Northwestern. All right. So while we have this opportunity, Prof, you've been on the sideline. And you know what? The crowd really into the ball game. Nice crowd on the Grambling side. Yeah, uh, it, it was kind of spotty at the beginning of the game, but there were people still coming into the stadium uh, in the middle of the first quarter. And now it's looking wall to wall here in the stadium on the Grambling side. It's electric, a lot of just a, just a great buzz all around the stadium uh even a pretty decent showing by the northwestern faithful who uh came in for the game today and the sideline i mean just grinning from ear to ear people who are so happy my only thing is my shoes are completely dusty now uh thanks to this turf so thanks turf for dosting up my stacy adams back to you guys up in the booth nobody told you to wear stacy adams hey. down on the field nobody that's had to tell me to wear stacy adams on the field well that's what happens when you do that you got you know what happens it's, it's a sideline you know what happens? Sideline. Yeah, you get dirty. You get put on the list. See, there you go. Here is Martez Carter across the 45 to about the 42-yard line. Pass is complete. Because he did it. He did it. It. Fourth yes. down. And as you said, there is no play for third down in 25 and 30. Nope. Give yourself space to punt the football away. That's all you want to do. Wasn't a turnover, wasn't a great possession. So now all you want to do is just put it away. Mendez with the kick. And they get away from it. Nice job by the Grambling Tigers down at the one now yard the line. One. That is perfect. What a great job by the special teams. That's perfect. Couldn't ask for a better job that time between the Grambling special teams. And Percy Cargo was the man down there who was able to touch that ball at the one 
yard line. That's something that Coach Fobbs talks about a lot is the importance of special teams and how they can change the ebb and flow of a game, and they definitely just changed the ebb and flow of this game with that fantastic punt coverage. So Northwestern State, talk about backs against the wall here. Slot to the far side. And they get out to about the five-yard line. Maybe the six. So a run of about five yards on that play, and that is a great run on first down. When you're talking about having your backs inside the one-yard line and possibly getting tackled in the end zone for safety, you're able to get out to about the six-yard line. It doesn't seem like a lot, but when you're talking about... It's a big difference. Yeah, it, you talk about options here. Now watch the swing. It's going to be a flag on the play. It's going to go against Grambling, but this is going to go down the field. Intercepted. Nope, it's going to be dropped, but it's going to be a penalty against Grambling. And that interception, or I should say almost an interception by DeMonte Johnson. You don't mind a penalty if you're being aggressive. So you might as well have gone through and just hit somebody. Then that start and stop type of deal. If you start it, you might as well go ahead on and go. And here's the other thing. If you're a down lineman, it does not make sense for you to jump. Your eyes are on the ball. Right. You don't go on sound anyway. Second down and one. Single receivers to both sides. And here's a give to the running back that's going to be number two, Xavier Bell. And they'll keep the clock running. 153 remaining in the first half of play. 17-7 is the score. Trips to the far side, one receiver to the near side. And this pass was tipped Ooh. and incomplete. Jared West. Almonds had to get rid of that yeah. ball quick. He did because he was about to get cream. smoked. Look at no. that. I mean, just. He got smoked at the end. And he's walking back mighty slow. Gingerly. Trips to the far side. One receiver to the near side, and that's Bobby Chan Chan. He's the one that's dangerous here for the Northwestern State Demons. Grambling showing some blitz. Here's Allman back to pass. Looking for the open receiver, and it is going to be, is it complete? No, incomplete. At about the 34-yard line, and that'll bring up third down one thing that I'm seeing is they're bringing the pressure from the right side from the left side of the offense right side of the defense on almonds to get him away from Chan Chan because he's been looking for Chan Chan for these last couple of series but the Grambling defense is making sure that he can't get a good look at his favorite receiver which has had a great effect on the Northwestern offense well, right? just blitzing a guy where there is nobody Rodney Jackson and Jeremy Carter in the ball game for the Grambling Tigers. Man in motion for Northwestern State is Chapman from left to right. Trips to the far side. Here is Allman. Nice open field tackle. Oh, he yep. got away a little bit there, but a great job in following up on that tackle by Grambling. And uh, that's one of the things you had to do. You just got to fight for that tackle. One minute remaining in the first half of play, and now we have a timeout, it looks like, on the field. So we'll take a timeout as well with one minute remaining, 57.8 remaining, 17-7 is our score. One minute timeout, we'll be right back. So what do you think about the game so far? Uh, good game so far. Good game. Yeah, good game. Are you enjoying yourself? Oh, yeah. 
Make sure you read your text message. Who's your favorite player? Hey, Prof. Yes, sir. Make sure you read your text message. I got you. All right. Plenty of time now for Northwestern State. One minute remaining here in this first half of play. 17 to 7 is our score. Here is the kick up in the air. Takes a Grambling bounce back towards the uh, line. And Grambling will get the ball in great field position with 49 seconds remaining in this first half of play at about the 47 yard line. Not a bad position to start, actually, with 49 seconds. I'm not exactly sure how many timeouts Grambling or Northwestern has at this particular point in the football game, Santori. I know that a couple of timeouts have been called on both ends at this particular point. Official star play. Double slot formation. Here is Kincaid back to pass and try to get it to the receiver on the far side, incomplete. and it's incomplete. And that'll bring up a second down and 10 here for the Grambling Tigers with 44.6 remaining here in the first half of play. And this is something, obviously, that Tigers do all the time, the two-minute offense, so to speak, and trying to move the ball down the field. Basically, when your whole offense is a two-minute offense. Basically, you don't have to worry about it. You don't it. really worry about it too much. Grambling is known to move the ball up and down the field quickly. Here is Kincaid back to pass. Pressure coming, and Kincaid goes down at the 35. And there was no way he was going to be able to do anything with that Santoria. They were already in the backfield by the time he got the snap. And Coach Fobbs is telling everybody, let's go ahead and head to the locker room here with a 17-7 lead going into the halftime locker room. So we will take a two-minute timeout when we come back. Nick Harrison down on the sideline with a very special guest. We'll take a two-minute timeout, local timeout. You're listening to the Grambling Sports Radio Network. We'll be right back. Award from General George Patton. At the conclusion of World War II, Dr. Carter diligently returned to his studies and earned degrees from Fisk University, University of Wisconsin at Madison, and the State University of Iowa. He started his career at Grambling in 1952 as an instructor and ultimately served as the provost and vice president for academic affairs. He went on to become the 14th president of Wiley College in Marshall, Texas. Sadly, Dr. Carter passed away on August 30th and was laid to rest this past Thursday. Let's have a moment of silence for Dr. Lamore Joseph Carter.
Thank you. All right, they just got finished for the moment of silence here at the stadium. This Professor time, Nick Harrison down on the sidelines. We get ready for the world-famed Grambling Tiger Marching Bowl. Band to head out onto the field and do their thing. We had a scheduled interview with Rashid Rashan, but Mr. Rashan has seemed to take off on us. So I'm going to call an audible here and see if my main man himself, E3, and Robinson III will come on with me to talk a little bit about this new field and scoreboard. You mind going on with us for a second? Oh, fantastic. We've got E3, Eddie Robinson III here with us at Grambling at Eddie G. Robinson Memorial Stadium. Brand new turf, brand new scoreboard, great renovations to the stadium. What do you think? Much needed upgrades. So I think uh, my grandfather, Coach Eddie Robinson, would be proud of the upgrades that we have. We need to compete a little bit more as far as recruiting. You got to have Sergeant that first class, and you got to have that William J. Rutledge. Absolutely. See, those, these are some of the things that a, a program like Grambling State University needs because the, the athletics is the window through which people see your university. And with the season that Grambling State had last year, these are just these are the kind of renovations, the kind of additions that you need to bring more people under the tent. What do you think of the Grambling offense so far? Offense, defense. What do you think? Got, how do you think the guys are doing so far? I think we're much improved um, from last weekend. Um, I still think we got some more things to iron out. Um, we want to certainly get Kincaid going. Um, Martez is looking fine. Um, Defensive-wise, I mean, I think um, the guys just need to keep pushing. And, uh, you know, we're playing with some guys that are, you know, ready to, um, you know, just go after them. I mean, that's what we need to do. Uh, defense just has to continue to get after them. Um, I think our line needs to keep pushing and pressing. Hey, man, much improved uh, from last weekend. I still think uh, we're still polishing up. Now, with this first game of the season in the new home, we're talking to Eddie Robinson the third here on the Grambling Halftime Show on the Grambling Sports Radio Network. Uh, we've had so many legends to come in this weekend because of uh, the new renovations. We see them being honored right now on the field. What does it mean to you to see some of these people who were so instrumental to the university, especially while your grandfather was here at the university? What does it mean to you to see all of these people come back for such a, a, a momentous day for the university? It means a lot. And I mean, what, they just honored uh, Dr. Carter. Um, Dr. Carter had a tremendous impact not only on the university but on the community around here as a whole. I think uh, Dr. Carter started here in 1952. Not long after my grandfather had started here, so uh, he's a fabric of the community. Uh, he'll be solely missed, uh, but I think we got folks like uh, President Rick Gallo to continue the legacy that others have left, uh, including um, the legends that they're honoring out there now. You talk about uh, President Rick, who has become a hashtag of sorts. Is because that's his popularity, though. That's what he's meant to these universities. Because you talk about community, he's a part of the fabric of the community. And what he's been able to do for this university has been outstanding. What do you think? How do you think President Rick has done so far uh, with bringing the magic back, as it were, to Grambling State University? I think the fact that he's of the culture and he's a Grambling alum. And I mean, you know, he grew up in this community. Um, his parents made a tremendous impact. Uh, his father was mayor here. Uh, his mother, Dr. Mildred Gallo, tremendous lady. Um, I just think that uh, Rick being of the culture, a lot of folks want to do for a Rick. You know, Prez Rick as he's being called and as I would call him. Um, I'm behind him 100% and I think um, he's got the university moving forward. So we're talking with uh, E3, Eddie Robinson III here on the Grambling Halftime Show of the Grambling Sports Radio Network. Before I let you go, E3, I, you know, we're talking about Prez Rick, you know, president, governor, mayor, that kind of thing. When are we going to see Eddie Robinson III run for office? We're going to run for mayor of Grambling, man. You, come on, landslide. Landslide win. When are we going to see you running? You're too kind. You're too kind. You know what? I tell folks, uh, whatever God has in store for me, he will equip me. But uh, right now, I think I'll stay out of the political arena. But um, I want to 100 percent support Gramlin State University and the city of Gramlin and, of course, our dear old state of Louisiana. 
Absolutely. E3, thank you so much, man. We appreciate you. God bless you. Catching him on the fly. We had somebody else schedule and just walk up and say, E3, you can get the Yes, sir. Absolutely. That's the kind of man that he is. Eddie Robinson the third of legacy here at Grambling State University, checking out this brand new field and brand new scoreboard and loving every minute of it. The Gremlin Tiger Marching Band is about to hit the field and we're about to hit a timeout. Let's take a two minute, two minute timeout. You're listening to the halftime show here on the Grambling Sports Radio Network. We'll be right back. Grambling State University. The moment of truth has finally arrived. Is there anybody on his head? Yep. I'm here. Hey, yeah, Rasheed Rashawn disappeared from sidelines. I don't know where he went to, but I got E3. That's good, good job. All right, uh, head it up. You are? Yeah. We're not going to do the AV down there? The, am I getting the AD? Where is he at? He's right here. I see him. Yeah, get him if you can. Okay. Hold up. Just real quick. I know this sounds stupid. What is this dude's name? Paul Bryant. Paul Bryant. That's right. The Bear. All right, got it. Did you get stats? Did you get stats? All right, I got it. All right. We try to get away from the Welcome back to the halftime show here on the Gramlin the halftime show here on the Gramlin Sports Radio Network. I'm the Professor Nick Harrison here on the sidelines here with another interview. We've got new athletic director here for Gramlin State University, Mr. Paul Bryant. First and foremost, does anybody call you the Bear? Hey, no, it's Paul Tiger Bryant. I'm in Tiger. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, tell me a little bit about your experience at Gramlin so far as you've become the new athletic director. I tell you, it has been electrifying. I mean, there's a lot of pride here at Gramlin. That's why I came to Gremlin, because I wanted to be prideful as well. And it's just been a wonderful experience, and I'm happy to be here. Now, this is the debut, first game with the new turf, the new scoreboard. So what are some of the reactions that you've been getting so far from fans, from some of the legends who've come in today for the event? What are some of the reactions you've been getting to how the stadium looks now with the renovation? Well, I tell you, I've been getting nothing but positive vibes, and then people have been complimenting us on what we've done uh, on the field and uh, with the video screen. And you know what? Like they said, it had, nothing has been done since 1983. And having this, this is what we deserve. We deserve the best, and I think we have the best. Athletic Director for Grambling State University, Paul Bryant, joining us here on the Halftime Show with the Grambling Sports Radio Network. Now, Mr. Bryant, uh, last week, <coughs> Grambling plays Tulane. Uh, game doesn't necessarily go the way that we hoped that it would, but now we come back in 17-7 over Northwestern. What's the vibe right now? Hey, you know what? Everybody's excited to play on this field. I think last week nothing went right. Our bus were uh, laid. I mean, everything was wrong, and then we took a loss. Everything has been right this week, and I think we're going to continue with this win. So with your experience as an athletic director and in the athletic field, Coming into Grambling State University, what are some things, some things you would like to implement with the Grambling Athletic Department going forward from this? And now that this is, this has been a success 
all, all the way through up to this point. It's been a success. What are some of the things that you'd like to implement with the athletic department? What I want to do is, uh, next thing is get our track together. Uh, there's nothing been done to our track and field area. We need to improve that. We've gotten uh, upgrades on our soccer, softball, baseball, but now we have to do our track and field. That's next. And then uh, we want to do some video things in our, in our uh, hobby center. So I have a lot of plans, and then eventually I want to have an indoor facility for all of our athletes to be able to utilize. See, that's something that I've heard, that we want to get that that indoor athletic facility, which is that's, that's a lofty goal. It's a dream that you would like to, that you would like, any, any university would like to have. How are we going to get to that point? Well, I will tell you, on my press conference, January 27th, I said I wanted to have a turf and a video screen, and we got it within six months. I'm not saying we're going to have an indoor facility within six months, but it will be sooner than later, I can tell you that. Athletic Director Paul Bryant joins us here on the Halftime Show with the Grambling Sports Radio Network. 17-7 to 7 right now, Grambling against Northwestern State, leading by 10. What are you seeing from the team right now? I think our team is excited. They're, they're into it, and that was some of the things that we, I really didn't see last week. I think what we're going to do is going to be we're going to double the score and make them only have what they have on the screen right now. <laughs> so, <what? laughs> I, I like the sound of that. I, I enjoy your gameplay. You should be a part of the coaching staff. So, last question. Grambling State University, great job or the greatest job? It's the greatest job. This is where Coach Eddie G. Robinson was. So there's no other. He's the best. So this is the greatest job. I 100% agree. Mr. Bryant, thank you so much for joining us. Doing a fantastic job so far. Keep up the good, so far, keep up the good work, my man. Paul Tiger Bryant joining us here on the halftime show of the Gra with the Grambling Sports Radio Network. We're going to take another two-minute timeout, two-minute timeout, come back with some stats, scores, and more here from the whole Eddie G. Robinson Memorial Stadium. You're listening to the halftime show with Professor Nick Harrison here on the Grambling Sports Radio Network. We'll be back after this.
Welcome back here to the Eddie G. Robinson Memorial Stadium. The Grambling Tigers right now on top 17-7 to over the Northwestern State Demons. We'll take a look at some stats here in just a little bit. A couple of games that happened uh, this past week already. Alcorn and Florida International played in Birmingham. Of course, Florida International came over to uh, Birmingham to play that game because, of course, they were not playing at uh, Florida International 17-10. Alcorn loses a tough game there, and Prairie View A&M took Sam Houston State to the brink. It was 44-31 there. Prairie View trailed by a touchdown in the fourth quarter. Sam Houston, the number three team in the country. We'll take our final two-minute timeout. Two minutes, you're listening to the Grambling Sports Radio Network. with the professor, uh, Nick Harrison, uh, Santoria Black, stepped out for just a few moments. He will be back in just a little bit. Rambling State University and Northwestern State University, 17-7 is our score. Rambling getting ready to kick off to Northwestern as Northwestern won the toss to begin this ball game. Here is the address of the ball. You end over in kick going all the way down to the one yard line. He's across the 15 to the 20 and will be wrestled down at the 20 yard line. Pretty good job that time by the Grambling Tigers to stay in their lanes and make tackles that time, Nick. Absolutely. That's one thing they had a problem with last week was making those tackles and making strong tackles. They weren't wrapping up correctly. Uh, they were trying to arm tackle up high, and it just wasn't happening for them. So they've had done a much better job this week of tackling, of attacking at the point of, of interception. A yeah. point of attack, yeah, yeah. First down and 10 for the Northwestern Demons. Ball at the 24-yard line. Here is the handoff off of the right side. Decent run that time for the running back for Northwestern State University. Picked up about three or four on that play. Northwestern is hurrying up. A little bit better tempo this time here in the second half. Allman here on second down and call it six. Five-step drop, looking, throws, pass. Is it going to be complete or incomplete? Pass is complete. Wow. I don't know how he caught that. That was an excellent job of coverage by the Grambling Tigers, but 
The receivers apparently was just able to get the ball in his hands, bring it down. First down and 10 here for Northwestern after the completion. Pass out into the flat area. It's going to be a pickup of only a couple on that play. Good job by the Grambling Tiger. It's defense to rally quickly to the fall. A host of Grambling Tigers there at the reception to make the tackle to bring the receiver down. So they're going to bring up second down and seven. Nice night for football here in beautiful God's country in Grambling, Louisiana, 17 to seven hour score. Grambling on top, trip set to the far side of the formation. Here is the inside gift to the running back that time. That's Chris Jones. Jones has been a stud in this football game. A little over 13 minutes left to go here in the third quarter of play. Grambling and Northwestern just starting the third quarter. Inside give that time to Jones. And the Demons have another first down. And another Demon first down. First down and 10 for Northwestern. And down goes the quarterback, Allman. Brandon Varner is the guy that gets in the backfield that time for the Grambling State University Tigers. Did a good job of getting pressure into the backfield and making that tackle for Grambling State University. About a 10 yard loss right there. Tigers right now trying to uh, keep Northwestern State on the backs of their heels, so to speak. And Allman getting out of pressure here, and finally he is going to be wrestled down behind the line of scrimmage. He loses another three or four yards on this play. Good job that time by the Grambling Tiger defense. Savunas Santori is again staying within their alignments and assignments, rallying to the football, not giving Almond any space to get loose. This will bring up third down and a bunch. Make it 22 to go. 17-7 our score, 11-20 remaining here in this third quarter of play. Trips to the near side. Here is Allman back to pass. He looks to his left, trying to go down the field, gets the check down route. And this is going to go out to uh, number 85, and that's going to be the wide receiver, Cameron Lazar, the senior. And there's a little bit of... See, now that's the same yep. thing that earlier in this ball game. That Grambling got a penalize for Santori. Yeah, it was. And now a punting situation here for Northwestern State. Fourth down and 22, 17-7 our score. The snap, here is a kick, and this is a beautiful kick. It's going to send Martez Carter all the way back to about the one. Gets out of trouble at about the nine-yard line is where he will be brought down, and it's first down and ten. Hey, want to give a uh, shout-out here to the athletic department. They honored quite a few veterans of wars who uh, – Actually, you know, they did a lot. You know, see a lot of people from the community of Grambling and also some some Gramblingites as well Lieutenant who went Colonel to Grambling. And uh, you really see a lot of the uh, thanks and appreciation the crowd showed as they honored them at halftime. It was a beautiful thing too, Santori, because uh, these are the persons who gave themselves to make sure that we have the freedoms that we do every single day here in this particular country and was willing to put their lives on the line just to make sure that we can ensure those freedoms. And I, you can't say enough about how invaluable it is to have people like that within your community, within your school, within, within your state. So they deserve to be honored at all times. And I believe the Bible even talks about this uh, quite a bit. It talks about, you know, 
to whom you know uh, much honor is given, you know they, they're 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 necessarily receiving a double honor. You know yep. they they deserve that. The honor was first to serve, and then the honor is to be respected after the service is over. First down and 10 for the Grambling Tigers. They are at their own 10-yard line with 10-18 remaining here in this third quarter play. 17-7 our score. Here is the give up the middle over the left side, I should say. Martez Carter just dragging demons with him at about the 24-yard line, and that'll be enough for another Tiger first down. And Martez Carter is an absolute man-child, Santoria. Man-child. And we had a uh, injured player on the field. It only says that Martez had about 49 yards back in that first half, but they were an exciting 49 yards. Absolutely. And so while we have the injured demon on the field, we'll take an opportunity to remind you that next week, the Grambling Tigers will take on Jackson State University. Game time is at 6 p.m. right here at Eddie G. Robinson Memorial Stadium. Pre-game is at 5 p.m. Make sure that you listen up. And also, the Lab online radio station at Grambling State University presents a pancake breakfast, which is coming up on September the 16th, 8 to 10 a.m. at Applebee's located in Ruston. Do your part, support the students of the online Lab radio station, which is called The Lab. You can listen live by going to the lab.radio12345.com or you can listen by downloading the Listen to My Radio app. That's Listen, the number Let's to My Radio, the and then, the of course, type in the lab. Ball. You can also pick up your issue of the latest Grambling Night newspaper, Washington Johnson Complex, when you come to Grambling State University and, of course, throughout the campus at the Grambling Night newsstands, which are located in most of the academic and residential hall buildings. Here's a kid once again across the 25-yard line up to about the 30. You can always tune into the YouTube channel, which is sponsored by JSU TV. And Carter comes off the field here momentarily. Back-to-back -back big runs that time. Brooks will, Brooks will come in. He will be the slot receiver on the far side. Stack formation, double stack formation, which is a four receiver set to both sides. Flowers is the lone setback. Kincaid back to pass. Still looking, going deep. Trying to find the open receiver. It is caught. That is number 16, Salmon. And he goes all the way inside the 20 yard line to about the 19 first down and 10 for the Tigers. That's great blocking up front by that offensive line, Santoria. They did a great job of being able to create a pocket where Devontae Kincaid could step up and make it that throw down the field. Stepped up, made the throw, good throw, good catch, first down line. And here is the give. Nothing doing this time. A couple of yards, maybe a couple. I think pick up about four yards. It's not bad running yardage right there for the Grambling State University Tigers off that off right side of that offensive line. Double slot formation. For the Grambling Tigers here on second down, and they'll call it seven here. And here's a give. Kincaid did a great job. Boy, you talk about still on his feet. Gets across the 15 down to about the 13-yard line. And that's Martez Carter. Boy, he took what would have been about a yard loss. And made something out of it because it was absolutely positively nothing bad. Took a busted play, basically, that would have been behind the line of scrimmage and made it a positive play. Put you in a third down and call it a, give it four. Man in motion, it's gonna be a uh, false start it looks like. 
I don't know who moved up front for Brown. 77 on the offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. Can you watch on your main coach? Five big ones pushes back, Sam. Five-yard penalty, four receiver set trips to the near side. Here's Kincaid looking, goes over the middle. Oh, incomplete. Pass is incomplete. To the uh, right side or the near side there. That's on the Linda and Brooks. Here is the field goal by Orozco. The kick has got the uh, distance. It is good. good. 6.50 remaining here in this third quarter play. 20 to seven is now our score. We'll take this one minute timeout. One minute, you're listening to Grambling Football here on the Grambling Sports Radio Network. One minute timeout, we'll be right back. Welcome back here to Eddie G. Robinson Memorial Stadium, Santoria Black, Ossie Clark, Nick Harrison down on the field, and we are getting ready for kickoff here as it comes down to Northwestern State. That's going to be Xavier Bell once again. Bell's going to run across the 5, 10, out to the 15, still on his feet, right side, 20 to the 25, leaped over a tackler, 30, out to about the 35-yard line, first down and 10 for the uh, Graham, for the Northwestern State Demons. Joining us right now, the Vice President of Sports Video, uh, Brad Brown from NEVCO. I had a chance to meet you guys out in Orlando at a NACTA convention about five or six years ago. And one of the guys that came here actually had a chance to tour him on campus and told him that they were going to put a scoreboard here. Did it, it happen? It, it did. It has been the uh, right place at the right time. Great history here at Grambling, and uh, NEVCO is just excited to be part of it. We'll get back to you right here after this play. Single receivers to both sides for Northwestern State. Two men in the backfield. Allman in the shotgun for Northwestern. Hands the ball off. That's going to be number 21 once again, and that's going to be West. And it'll bring up second down. Brad, when you start looking at the, this project and uh, the process of you being able to be the winning company to get this bit what was it like what, what did you do in order to kind of sell this well you know it's funny this was a six-year project believe it or not so grimly now obviously with uh, president gallo and uh, and ad bryant it was just the right time and with the history that's here obviously with the uh, coach robinson and uh and the and the championships the multiple championships it just made perfect sense and we were just waiting for the right time and it was definitely the right time no game by northwestern there on second down and brad you know i look at this scoreboard i saw some renderings of uh the uh, scoreboard early on and um, I know at one point in time, you know, there was a, a lot of different talk about what this is going to look like, what the vision was like, and uh, there were a lot of things going back and forth, and now you've got the scoreboard with that G right there at the top. You know, it, it, we, when we looked at it, we sat down with the, with the, with the president and with, and with the A.D. Bryant, and 
you know, they just kind of said, and we want to put us not only for what's now, but what's going to be great in the future. And uh, that's what we ended up with. It's uh, We just could not be happier. And we thank also Hellas and for the field and plane service. So it's a first-class uh, operation, first-class plane conditions for Gramley. Matter of fact, I saw this uh, rendering by Hellas as we have a long throw here by Allman oh. going down the field. It will be over everybody's head. And that'll bring up a fourth down situation. When you look at the scoreboard, talk a little bit about what this thing can do, because it's a monster. It, it, it is, and the great thing is, it's not only for the fan experience, it's, uh, it's a 16 millimeter, um, you know, we call it true pixel, so it looks just like a TV screen, and that's what we intended it to be for the fan experience. But also, one thing I'll just quickly segue is that, uh, as we did during the during the game, is that we are, are looking also at the at the students and the folks that are in the mass communications department here at Grambling. We want to give them an opportunity to not only use the 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 board, but also become part of the curriculum here as part of their studies. Here is the punt coming up, and everybody will get away from it. It will land at about the 30, take a roll, and be down at about the 26-yard line. First down and 10 for the Grambling Tigers. You spoke about the students in the mass communication department. You had a chance to present a $10,000 check to, uh, to the kids for scholarships and things like that as they learn. And a big moment there. It, you know, it's just one of these things that athlete, you know, athletics in general drive, you know, sports or collegiate sports and effort, obviously, obviously professional sports. But the great thing here is that it provides opportunities as we worked with Mark Newman in the president's office. And for students that maybe need a little bit of gap assistance or financial assistance, we worked out a plan that worked for the university. Nobody knows it better than the president's office. And we'll be able to help, you know, multiple kids throughout the coming years to create a, a, a higher level of education in the mass communications uh, area. And there's so much that goes along with this scoreboard, not only from the standpoint of the way it looks, but the different things that you can do. I had a chance to see some of the software, and uh, the software is amazing that goes along with it. It, it is. It's state-of-the-art software. It's proprietary for us. And, you know, the great thing about it is it's great in athletic competitions, but obviously you have a fantastic band, have had for, for many, many years, and it can capture things that are just even outside of... Uh, of sporting events. You can have movie nights, you can have various community events, and you have the, the this hardware and the software that, that can handle all of that. And you know what? Uh, it's well worth it. It's the first time since 1983 that uh, this stadium has received a facelift like this, and this this game here marks the 35th year of football here at the stadium. So how fitting it, is that? It's just fantastic. We, again, we are just so blessed to be part of the, the, the heritage and the history of Grambling, and we look forward to great things moving forward. Well, Brad, thank you so much, man. Thank you Great very much. Appreciate you. it. And uh, well, the other guy's name that I met down in uh, in uh, Orlando. Probably Westwood. Westwood. Yeah, Got to give was... a shout out to Wes. He's a great guy. He's been uh, he's been around and carried it through for the last six years. He's a, he's a great guy. Absolutely. Thank you so much for what you've done. The donation, of course, and then of course, great work on this scoreboard. It's absolutely fantastic. Happy to be part of it. Thank you so much. All right, that is Brad Brown, the vice president for sports video from Nevco, back in here at live action. Third, I should say, second down and about 12 yards to go. Trips to the near side. And, of course, uh, Kincaid in the shotgun here for the Grambling Tigers. Kincaid looking for the swing pass, pulls it back down, still looking. Now we'll take off with the football, running out of bounds at about the 30-yard line, about a four-yard gain. And it'll be a uh, third down and about uh, six-yard situation. Yeah, Devontae Kincaid told the wide receiver, go ahead on and go down the field, make that block. We can get as many yards as we possibly can and shorten this third down is own situation for the Grambling Tigers. Here is Kincaid back to pass looking left and it's complete. Oh, he slips just in front of the first down Kincaid's marker. Pass is complete. And that's going to be uh, number 17, Darrell Clark, who he was in front of the marker, had to come back and get the ball, and before he had a chance to turn up the field, slipped and fell. Yes, he did. Number 17, the real court. Good route. Short of the first Everything down. was good there, That's just couldn't keep those game. wheels under him. And under a new surface like this, Santoria, it's kind of hard sometimes. Because as it gets slick, it gets Eight slick quickly. To receive for the demons. And now the uh, Tigers will punt the ball away here. Fair catch at about, oh no, they're not going to call a fair catch, and it's going to be down at about the 34-yard line. That's dangerous. Yes, it was. But they sent the pressure that time, Santoria. They were trying to block that time.
see if Northwestern can develop a little bit better rhythm here in the second half. That's what they've been trying to do. Will and Grambling's defense. In attendance, please stay. The Grambling State has been so stingy today, Santorio. Mm -hmm. And so Grambling's defense has been so stingy at this particular point, it's been hard for Northwestern to actually get into a rhythm of this game. Yes, we're going to take a quick timeout here as they take a timeout here at the stadium. One minute timeout. We'll be right back. After a six-yard gain on first down, slots in the near side, all kinds of movement. And it's going to be a free play. JT, J.D. Allman with the pass, and it's going to be complete across the 50 at about the 46-yard line. Yeah, Allman understood that it was going to be a play that he could get a free play out of. Puts it in a position where his receiver could go make a play on it on the sideline. Gets a first down. Double slot formation, Allman in the shotgun, one man in the backfield with him. Grambling showing blitz, 2.06 remaining in the third quarter. 20-7 to 7 our score. Here's Allman with the pass to the right side, and the ball was just dropped. Incomplete. Wouldn't have been a big in game, but it would have been about uh, second and six. Anything is better than nothing, though, Sam. Offensively, when you can pick up something out of the deal, it's better than nothing any day, all day long. Slot to the near side once again. Here is the give to the running back. And nice job, open field tackle there. Jones on the carry. John Kill, Skipper with the and Skipper with the tackle, tackle for the, for for the Grambling Tigers. Yeah, Skipper came through and made a nice open field tackle. Otherwise, that play had the potential to go a long way, Santoria, a little counter step, and then he was off to the races. Third down and eight for Northwestern State. They'll have a four receiver set, trips to the near side, one receiver to the far side. Allman in the shotgun, Allman back to pass, looking, trying to find an open man. Goes downfield, complete, first down. Pass is complete. And it'll be at about the 33 yard line and on the sideline. And the pass was caught down. by uh, number 85, Cameron Lazar. He's had a couple of big catches today. Yeah, Lazar did a good job again running that pattern right at the defender, setting down in that zone, and coming up with a huge catch. And here's a run on first down. Gets about two or three yards on the play. Boy, we've had some great guests. E3 joining us on the show. Paul Bryant. And not the Paul Bear Bryant, but Paul Tiger Bryant. Tiger. Joining us on the halftime show, of course, we've had Brad Brown, who is the vice president from NEFCO. Jones. 
Tigers sent a lot of pressure right in the face of Northwestern, and they were just able to get a tackle in on Jones. Otherwise, if Jones would have got that right foot solid into the ground and up the field, that's six points for the Demons. Down on the sideline, and Nick Harrison is down there. And uh, Nick, after halftime, you see Coach Fobbs, uh, as the uh, time winds down here in the third quarter, he's getting his guys up for the fourth quarter. So we'll take a time out here. And when we come back, we'll have fourth quarter action. We'll go down on the field to Nick Harrison as well. Time out on the field with the score. Grambling 20, Northwestern 7. We'll take a one-minute timeout. One minute. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Robinson Stadium here on the campus of Grambling State University. Ossie Clark, along with the one and only Zantoria Black, who had to once again step out for just a few moments. Along with me is the professor, Nick Harrison. Nick Harrison down on the sideline. It'll be first down and 10 for the Northwestern State University Demons. Ball at the Grambling 26 yard lines. Here's the handoff straight ahead. First down for the Demons. Yeah, you gotta have a sense of urgency if you're Northwestern State right now. You got the fourth quarter, you're down by 13. You're gonna need at least two scores to get back in this game. So it'll be first down and 10 for the Northwestern Demons. Ball at the tw Grambling 20. Twin set, here's the motion. Inside give to Jones. Jones tries to load a couple of Grambling guys, but nothing doing. The Grambling State University Tigers doing an amazing job of making sure that Jones cannot get going here in the fourth quarter of play. Good job of staying with the play by the Grambling defense, not giving up on the play, not giving up on it, as he continuously tried to avoid the tackle, stiff arms, trying to get away. Great job by the Grambling defense. Second down and call it 13 for the Northwestern State University. Demons ball back at the Grambling 23-yard line. Here is the almond pass. It's going to be complete. Pass is complete. It's going to be a completion across the 20 up to the up to about the 16 yard line. Uh, no, 17. Right on the 17 yard line. Right here at the 17. It's it's good to see the Tigers converging at the point of attack this week. We didn't see a lot of that last week, finishing the tackle. The defense has really turned it up this game. We're seeing a completely different Grambling unit this week. That was Lazard on the catch again for Northwestern State University. 20 to seven is our score. Grambling is on top. Here in tonight's contest between Grambling and Northwestern State University. 14.42 remaining. 
taking them quite some time here to discuss what's exactly what's going on down on the field. A bit of a stoppage of play. The referees, I think, are trying to look at the. I don't, I don't know what he's exactly looking at. I don't know either. Maybe they were examining where the ball was spotted. I don't know if it's the spotting of the ball or if they're just trying to check the game clock to see if it's correct. Yeah, 1442 is what's on the clock right now. 20 to 7 is our score. Hey, I got an announcement. Just just found this out. Let me tell you, let me tell you as, as you say, we, we all have our names. You know, I got a nickname when I was in college called Chairman of the Airwaves. So Nick is a professor of the airwaves. Leon is the voice of the airwaves. Mm -hmm. And you're the, the minister of airwaves. The I'm minister. the minister of the minister airwaves. airwaves. Yes. Okay. As we call you are our Reggie White. Yes. Time is being kept on the field. Did they say that? Yeah, I don't think what's going on. I don't know what's going on with the clock, but that's what the stoppage was about. They were checking the game clock as opposed to the clock on the field. And now they're looking at the play clock because the play clock's not right. And now they're resetting the play clock. Oh, bunches just now happened the play in clock. <laughs> three minutes, yeah. man. No kidding. Northwestern State driving bunch formation to the far side. And here is Allman back to pass. Allman looking, trying to find an open receiver, and it is incomplete. Pass in and out of the hands of Chan Chan. Again, as Netherton says, the person with the ugliest throwing form, but it just gets there. It gets there. And that's all that really matters at the end of the day, brother. Yep, Chan Chan is the one that he said had ugly form, and uh, he threw for a touchdown. He was two for two passing, as a matter of fact, in that game against Louisiana Tech. Had a trick play in that ball game, and now we got a field goal attempt coming up for Northwestern State. The field goal attempt is by Austin Fendrick. The kick is up, the kick is up and it is good. And off the upright and good. Wow, ricochet That's off the upright. We'll take a timeout on the field with the Chris score. Lee, Grambling the the 20 and Northwestern State 10. We'll take this one-minute timeout. One minute, you're listening to the Grambling Sports Radio Network. Welcome, welcome back here to Eddie G. Robinson Memorial Stadium here on the campus of Grambling State University. The Tigers right now had their lead cut to 10 points, 20 to 10 now the score as they're on top of uh, Northwestern State University. Santoria Black along with Ossie Clark and the professor, Nick Harrison, down on the sideline. And the reason you don't hear Leon on the air is because he has public address announcing duties during home games. The man of many tasks, many, many duties. Here's a kickoff, comes down to Martez Carter, right at about the goal line, out to the 5, 10, goes to the right, back to the left, out to the 20, and the Tigers will take over first down and 10 at the 21-yard line. Hey, just an announcement here for you coming up this week on The Lab, the thelab.radio12345.com. Someone's going to have a chance to win Mays and Frankie Beverly tickets. Really? Next week at uh, Municipal Auditorium, 8 p.m. So after you get done with the Jackson game, you can go over and you can see Mays and Frankie Beverly in concert. Uh, all you have to do is text the word Mays along with your name and your phone number to 318-596-9080. And just so people know, you're a pastor. You ain't going to lie about it. Here are the tickets right here. Mays yes, and Frankie Beverly. I'm looking at them right now. 
So where are you going to be putting those tickets after the game? In a secure location. Yes, a secure you, location. You can leave them on the, the counter if you want to, and I, I just want to take a look at them. It's not fair that Ossie gets to see them, and I don't. So. I want to send you a picture of them. No, no, I want to see. I want to touch them, hold them, possibly take them home. Yes, wow. <laughs> and we've got movement on the line. Snap infraction. Snap infraction. Snap infraction. Means you're kind of messing with the ball a little bit before you snap it. And, of course, uh, that's William Jefferson, the sophomore from New Orleans. He went to McMain High School. You know, one, I was talking to a couple of uh, people who, of course, uh, were from South Louisiana and gone to some pretty good high schools that play football, and they said that they, uh, they really like some of the matchups that some of these schools have had. Here is the throw. Out to about the 20-yard line, maybe the 24, or the, the 19, rather, and it'll bring up second down. Now a double slot formation for the Tigers here on third down and 13. Tigers do not want to go three and out and put Northwestern's offense back on the field as Northwestern drops eight. Here's Kincaid. He'll take off across the 20, 25, up to about the 26-yard line. Got to give credit to Northwestern. They dropped eight men back in coverage, three men rushing the football, but still a couple of those guys who were on that second line, they did a great job of containing Kincaid, not allowing him to get significant yards. They gave him about four or five yard, a cushion there, but that's about all. Not much there for Devontae Kincaid. He was looking to run that football, and that's a pretty good philosophy at this particular point. Into punt for the G-Man. And Mendez is going to take off with the football, and he gives a little soccer-style kick that goes up to a, a 42-yard or the third, about the 42-yard uh, line is where the ball ends up. And he comes off the field, and Coach Fobbs is not happy. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of trying to keep the mic away from Coach Fobbs right now because I don't think you want to hear what he's saying to him. Well, Mendez, he started taking off with the football and not quite sure what he was doing. Yeah, that kind of threw me for a loop. I think he saw the rushing defender was trying to get it over to the side and kick it to try to keep it from being blocked. Well, it gives Northwestern great field, great position. field position. Trips to the near side, one receiver far side, and Northwestern has been moving the football. Here is Allman, back to pass, looking back to his right, down the middle of the field, picked off! Tigers picked the ball off, that is DeMonte Johnson, and there's going to be a horse flag. Collar too. Yep, so there's going to be an interception, tackled at the 25, and then, of course, a horse collar. Talk Ooh. about a change real quick. Great read on that pass. Fantastic read on that pass, was able to jump the route, get the interception, and then the horse collar on top of that. A great reversal of fortune for the Grambling Tigers. Looks like we're going to have a timeout on the field. There's going to be, there's going to be a personal foul that's going to be on uh, Chapman. And we have a timeout on the field. We'll take a one-minute timeout, one minute with the score. Grambling 20. Northwestern State 10. We'll take this one-minute timeout. You're listening to the Grambling Sports Radio Network.
Welcome back here to Eddie G. Robinson Memorial Stadium. Our next break will be network break number 215. 215 will be our next break. Here's Kincaid with the pass, and he goes out of bounds. The closest person to that ball was uh, number 13, and that's going to be Quentin Geis, the wide receiver. He was the closest person to that ball. Mm. So it'll be second down and 10 here for the Grambling Tigers. 11.42 remaining in the ball game. The most important thing here for the Tigers now is to keep control of that clock. Here's a give to Martez Carter. Gets across the 40 to about the 43-yard line. Gain of about three yards on the play. And it'll be third down and seven. That's another situation Coach Fallon spoke about is trying to avoid third down and long situations for the Tigers. They faced that a lot last week against Tulane. Now they got more guys coming out. Brooks will come into the ball game as well as Clark will come into the contest for the Grambling Tigers on offense. Trips now to the near side, one receiver out wide to the far side. Kincaid in the shotgun for the Grambling Tigers. Here's a snap, Kincaid back to pass, looking. He'll take off with the football, running to his right. Still looking, and it's complete across the 50-yard line, and then a fumble on the play, and it looks like Northwestern State will have the ball. It looks like Northwestern State may have the football at about the 48-yard line. There was a catch, it was a first down, and then there was a hit. And the Demons, and the demons the get the football back with 10.56 remaining in the game. Wow. Well, in the last game against Louisiana Tech. Yep, so the, the official made the right call. Can't argue that at all. Here's a throw by no. Kincaid, and you can see right there now the question is whether he was down or not that's a good that's a good good out good call there and it's that's a uh, number 82 Devonte davis oh, with ooh, the catch it oh, looks like he may have been down ooh, i think that's a play that they have to go back and review you may want to look at that one talk about the the uh, advantage of replay he may have been down Ossie. I think he may have been. And it looks like that the uh, referee is talking to the replay booth, which is just above here us here at the press box. Oh, he was. Oh, down. he was down. He was down. Looks like he was down. I mean, back flat to the ground. Well, that ball pops out. And now the. Uh, Different angle. The referee will come over and talk to. Down the ball. Yeah, they'll come over and talk to. Looks like one of the replay people down on the sideline. Well, you know when you look at that replay though, it looked like that he was down and then the ball came out. Yep, looked like he got tackled to the ground, and then as he gets tackled here to the ground, that and then the ball came out. He stripped the ball after he was down. So good camera work right there by our guys. Great camera work because obviously the wide receiver, if you're watching uh, the YouTube channel on GSU TV, the receiver, Devontae Davis, looked like he hit his back, and then the defender ripped the ball out of his hands after he was down. So that's what they're talking about now. So let's go over a few things while we have this opportunity for a replay announcement. Don't forget the uh, Grambling State University Tiger football team will be in action coming up. Next week, 6 p.m. against Jackson State University right here. It'll be high school day, so looking forward to seeing everybody here at the stadium. 274-2625 is the number to call for tickets to the game. And don't forget to check out The Lab coming up this week, thelab.radio12345.com. Of course, got some live going, some programming going on right now. But next week, someone will have an opportunity to win tickets to the Mays and Frankie Beverly concert coming up at the Shreveport Municipal Auditorium next Saturday after the game. 8 p.m. is showtime. Mays will probably hit the stage around 9 or 9.30, so I'll give you plenty of time to leave here and head on over to the Shreveport area and watch Mays and Frankie Beverly after the game. I don't know, honestly. I, the more that I look at that, the more that it looks like it is definitely a catch, and then they stripped the ball after he was down. Yeah. There, and there it is. It's, it's, it's a pullout after he's made the tackle. Well, we're awaiting the official, and again, the uh, replay booth is just above us here at the press box. Last week. 
Last week, of course, when Grambling was at Tulane, there were over 15,000 fans at that ball game. Hopefully, we can see and break the 12 to 13,000 mark at this ball game here today. I am Alicia Lachey Gable from Shreveport, Louisiana, a senior majoring in mass communication and a snare drummer in the world famed Tiger March Band. First down, Grambling at the 48 yard line. Tigers will retain possession of the football, and that was the right call. Well, thanks for replay. The replay helps. Defense not happy about it, but when you keep looking at that replay, and uh, great job by the uh, by the cameraman who got that shot because he, he was easily on the ground and then the ball was stripped out afterwards. Years ago, it's not even a question. It's Northwestern's ball. Now with digital technology. Thank God. Trips to the near side. One receiver far side. First down and 10 for the Grambling Tigers. And here's a give to Martez Carter. Carter still on his feet across the 35 to about the 34-yard line. Hey, Carter just jitterbugs. Dances through. And it, it, and it looks like he never stops moving. He just never stops. Whenever he gets hit by one person, he keeps moving. Quinn Geis and, and Darrell Clark to the near side. Looks like Brooks to the far side for the Grambling Tigers. Double slot formation. Here's a, here is uh, the give to Carter, and nobody was able to fool the Northwestern defense that time. And uh, a loss of uh, yardage on that play. Credit to tackle to number 23, Nicholas Ford, the sophomore from DeSoto, Texas. Ford said, not on my side. You may be able to run on everybody else on the other side of the field. But not against me. Double slot formation. Here's Kincaid. Gets the ball to Geis. Boy, not too much there either. And you're seeing Northwestern starting to clamp down a little bit more. Now it's third down and about 13 here. If you're grambling, you're not in bad shape because uh, you're still running the time off this clock, 939. If you can get a first down here, you'll really put Northwestern on their heels. Here is... To Kincaid back to pass looking going deep in the middle incomplete through that it one floated on yep incomplete. to back to the outside of the intended receiver that ball floated on him punt oh absolutely absolutely that's not even a question fourth down on the field for the uh, Grambling Tigers to punt the football will be Mendez and a timeout on the field. Timeout Northwestern will keep it right here. Again next week the uh, Grambling Tigers taking on Jackson State University but uh, before we uh, talk a little bit more about that which will be a huge game first time Jackson has come to the hole in about four years. You can make a donation right now by texting Graham to 50155. That text, of course, that donation will go to help students at Grambling State University through scholarships, capital outlay projects, and also making sure to keep the campus great. Text the donation to text Graham to 50155. And also, you may not be on the field or the court, but when your team makes that last second game winner and the fans go wild, it feels like victory. There's nothing like it in the world except driving a Nissan. Get to Nissan, a proud supporter of college athletics and Grambling State University. World famed Tiger Marching Band, led by Dr. Larry Pinnell. But I'll tell you what, the band has really done a lot. Did a lot last spring. Went to uh, Ole Miss, Tulane. Punting the football uh, right now. Mendez, nice punch straight up. No return inside the 10 at about the 7 or 8 yard line. That's exactly where you want it. Hey, listen to one of our great stations and a proud supporter and a uh, 
broadcasting partner of the Grambling Sports Radio Network, ESPN 97.7, coming up next week on the Sports Company. You'll have an opportunity to win tickets to the Grambling and Jackson game. This is the Sports Company with Sean Fox and, of course, the cast of thousands uh, every weekday from 3 to 6 p.m. on your home for sports in North Louisiana, ESPN 97.7. And don't forget, listen to T-Lay over at Magic 97. Got the great classic R&B and rap. Make sure that you tune in because they'll have tickets to give away as well. It's great partners like Magic 97 and ESPN 97.7 and the Peach 99.3, making the Grambling Sports Radio Network strong and proud. 9-17 remaining here in this ball game. 2010 is the score. This is where the defense needs to shine here for the Grambling Tigers. <laughs> Single receivers to both sides. Here's the give to the running back straight up the middle of the field, and Grambling only giving up about a couple of yards on that play. And it'll bring up second down and about uh, eight yards, maybe seven yards to go here. Jones. Jones on the carry. He's been a little bit of a workhorse tonight. As a matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, led the team in rushing last week for Northwestern. He had uh, 16 carries and 60 yards plus a touchdown on the ground. And Jones is a tough runner. He is. Just hadn't been able to get that foot in the ground like he wants to get outside of this grambling defense. Here's a run on second down up to about the 15-yard line, a gain of about two on the play. The one player that I did not see, we haven't seen a lot of today, is Morgan. Uh, he had a touchdown, Lucas Morgan, for Northwestern last week. He had uh, three catches and a touchdown, if I'm not mistaken. Not sure exactly why Morgan hadn't played as much in today's game. Tigers on top, 20 to 10, 8 to 02 remaining in the ball game. Here's Allman back to pass, gets it out into the into the uh, flat. It's complete. That's a number eight for Northwestern State University. Uh, Jalen Watson, the wide receiver, junior from LA. And that's a first down for Northwestern. 7.47 remaining on the clock. 20 to 10, our score. Yeah, nothing fancy about what they just did right there. Just follow behind and then peel off at the last second. And the man coverage by Grambling on that last play. Trips to the near side, one receiver far side. Here is the quarterback back to pass. Allman looking and he's crushed. At about the 25-yard line, woo, he is absolutely crushed. He would have been hurt a little. He might have been hurt a little bit more, but uh, they saw that he was down. It looked like he was popped pretty good as he was trying to turn around by the defender. I think Alman is going to be just a little upset with his offensive line, and he's probably going to be a little bit upset once he, especially once he watched film, Santoria. Because right now he is getting his world rocked. Skipper, along with Banks on the sack. And here is Jones. Oh. He is stopped way behind the line of scrimmage at about the 23 yard line. Number five, Christmas. And Christmas lighting up the Northwestern offense. Coming into the ball game now for the Grambling Tigers. Making a little bit of a defensive change. Prof down on the field, and boy, you really see that Grambling football team starting to feel the energy of this crowd here, uh, Prof. Absolutely, the crowd is still into it. It's been a long evening here with delays and stoppages because of clocks and penalties, but they're still into it. They just got finished doing the wave. That was an awesome uh, cheerleader competition that just went on. So the crowd is still into the game, and the Grambling Tigers are feeding off the energy from the crowd. Third and 26, pass out to the far side, and Northwestern State can only get back to about the 34-yard line, way short of the first down. But uh, and there's a there's going to be a holding penalty. Grambling will probably decline that. Penalty. They did. Yeah, it's going to be fourth down and about 13 here. They'll decline the penalty, and the punt team will come on for Northwestern State with 5.51 remaining in the ball game. you got to watch for fake here, obviously, but one of the things that you have to be real careful of here 
is uh, the fact that if you're on the offense for Grambling, you want to make sure that you either score or you want to put them away. Yes, absolutely. Putting them away means keep that clock going. And a timeout by Grambling, they're going to uh, talk it over just to make sure that if there is a fake setup, that they're aware of it. They talked about assignment football during practice this week on defense, during special teams, and there's some fireworks going on yeah, uh, off to the side. That. Yeah. I don't know what's going on over look like in Ruston. That is in Ruston, as a matter of fact. You can see the fireworks from Grambling at the position where we're at over in Ruston. And it's at the, it was at the conclusion, if I'm not mistaken, of the Louisiana Tech football game. Oh, okay. But you can see them really bright and prominent right here at Eddie G. Robinson Stadium. You can hear them. I can hear them from down here. Was Tech going to set off fireworks, win or lose? Probably. Okay. So now Grambling is set up now. A near block. They get the kick away. And the ball will roll at about the 29-yard line. With 5.27 remaining in the ball game, we'll take a one-minute timeout. One minute, the Tigers on top by the score of 20-10 to 10 over the Northwestern State Demons. 5.25 remaining in the contest. We'll be right back. All right, so back here at Eddie G. Robinson Memorial Stadium. We'll go down on the field in just a little bit and find, about, find out about the fireworks display that we saw here. Here's the run across the uh, line of scrimmage up to about the 33-yard line. And, Prof, you said that was a part of the halftime festivity over there in Ruston. Yeah, uh, that had to be a part of the halftime festivity. They just now hit the half at Louisiana Tech when Mississippi State up 36-14 to 14 over Louisiana Tech. You know, I, I'm thinking that they were starting – not too long after us that maybe it could be something going on towards the end of the game but it was the half wow so that's why we saw the fireworks but you know they've got the new boxes over at tech and well they, they've done some new renovations to the stadium so it's it, it, that that may be all a part of the fanfare for louisiana tech faithful here is kincaid to take off with the football across the 35 to about the 37 maybe the 38 yard line and that'll be close to a first down here for the Grambling Tigers on second down, third and short here. Let's take a look at that scoreboard, and it's brought to you, of course, by our good friends at the Hampton Inn of Ruston. When you get ready to stay in Lincoln Parish and watch the Tigers play, make sure that you make your reservations at the Hampton Inn of Ruston. They have a absolutely delicious, hot, fresh breakfast every single morning. And then, of course, a little bit of a refreshment for you in the evening as you get ready to wind down your day. Third down, and here is the give across the 40, 50. Nice bake and shake by Martez Carter. Open field, 30 to the 20, all the way down to the 15-yard line. First down, Tigers. Good job of running the football that time by Martez Carter, getting in between the right guard, right tackle, and making something happen. That's what he does best. I do believe that's your exclamation point, fellas. Very possible. Well, the touchdown really solidified this thing. And it'll be a first down and 10. And a little scuffle going on right now after the play. 
Let's take a look at uh, some of the scores here real quick while the Tigers reset. Clemson on top of Auburn, 14 to six in the third. It's Notre Dame over Georgia at the half, 13 to 10. LSU all over UT Chattanooga, 28 to three right now at the half on the SEC Network. Oklahoma and Ohio State tied at three at halftime. Low scoring affair there. Man in motion now for Grambling and flags all over the place. Going to be a false start. Uh, Montana on top of, I should say Washington on top of Montana, 35-7, and they're not even at the half yet. USC on top of Stanford, 21-14 in the third quarter. Michigan beat Cincinnati 36-14. That game was close at one point in time. Wisconsin, they beat Florida Atlantic 31-14. And Louisville, they beat North Carolina 47-35. That game was close. Here's a give over the middle, across the 10 to about the 9-yard line. Alabama, no problem with Fresno today. 41-10 TCU beat Arkansas 28-7. I think that's a two-fold game right there. As we look at the replay, if you're watching GSU TV, you see uh, the running back for the Grambling Tigers. Uh, Flowers with the carry. Penn State, they beat Pitt 33-14, to breaking a little bit of a losing streak against Pitt. And Washington State and Boise State a little bit later on. That's an in-state game. Yep. Martez Carter spinning out of trouble and getting knocked down at about the, the nine-yard line. The spin giveth and the spin taketh away. It sure does. Northwestern called their second time out with a minute 44 remaining. We'll keep it right here. Trying to give you a few more scores here today. If you didn't know, of course, uh, ULM and Florida State's game was canceled. Of course, one of our thoughts and prayers going out to everybody in Florida right now is Hurricane Irma bearing down on the Sunshine State. Uh, that weather forecasters have said that uh, that could hit as a category four uh, and it was gain it would gain strength as it was leaving Cuba it could be a three by the time it leaves Cuba and gain strength but more importantly economists say that this storm could do upwards of 15 billion dollars in damage and uh, as a matter of fact uh, I believe it was uh, Manny Diaz who is the one of the coordinators at Miami said We'll be lucky if we're playing next week. Right. Let alone worrying about this week's this game. This week's game. They're lucky if they're going to be playing next week. Field goal time here for the Grambling Tigers. Here's the kick. And it is good. Tomlin on the field with the score. Grambling 23 and Northwestern State 10. We'll take this one-minute timeout. One minute. You're listening to the Grambling Sports Radio Network. We'll be right back. Welcome back here to Eddie G. Robinson Memorial Stadium here on the campus at Grambling State University. Here is the kickoff coming down to Northwestern State. And it'll come down at about the five. That is Chapman. And he's going to be brought down at the 15-yard line. Check that it was uh, Bell who was returning that kick. Let's take a look at the Southwestern Athletic Conference scoreboard, of course, brought to you by our good friends at the Hampton and of Ruston. Akron on top of Arkansas Pond Bluff, 52-3 in the fourth quarter of that one. Southern Miss. Jay Hompson, former head coach at Alcorn State, now at Southern Miss. They're beating Southern 42 to nothing. 
Southern Illinois on top of Mississippi Valley, 54 to three. They took a 72 to seven drubbing, if I'm not mistaken, against North Dakota State. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Southern Heritage Classic, Tennessee State after their big win against Georgia State, 10-9 game against Jackson, into the third. First down and 10. Here's Allman back to pass, looking for an open receiver, scrambling to the near side. Throws the ball, and it's out of bounds and incomplete. Yeah, Tennessee State, they beat Georgia State, one of uh, two teams to beat, one of three teams in FCS to beat a FBS school yes, last week. And Tennessee State is on top of Jackson State into the third, 10-9. Vanderbilt, they beat Alabama A&M today, 42 to nothing. Troy squeaks by Alabama State, 34 to seven. Uh, yeah, you can understand, yeah. Houston bit. Baptist beat Texas Southern, 24 to 17. Here's Allman back to pass, and it is incomplete. Great job by the defender on the far side. We told you about Sam Houston over at Prairie View A&M, 44 to 31, and FIU beat Alcorn, 17 to 10. That's the Southwestern Athletic Conference scoreboard. Tell you about other black college football here in just a second. It is third down and 10. Probably the last opportunity here for Northwestern State. They don't score here. Game is over. Here's Allman. Back to pass. Allman looking. He's going down at the 10-yard line. And he have and Almond is being peeled up off the ground. Like a date. That's a number 98, Almond Clark on the field. And a timeout on the field. We'll keep it right here. And the Tigers are about to wrap it up here. Timeout on the field. Was that Clark on the sack? Yes. And he transferred from Northwestern State. Put a little time back on the clock. Yeah, they, they got to put a little bit left on the clock. Twenty-three ten to score. Fourth down for Northwestern State. And as the album talks, this is it. Sixteen left on the play clock. One oh three remaining. Here's Allman back to pass, going deep, trying to find an open receiver, and it is incomplete. Tigers take over. First down and ten. Pass was intended for Chapman, and that will just about do it for the Northwestern State Demons as the Grambling Tigers. Looks like that it is mathematical, or mathematics, mathematics. Yeah. yeah, whatever. Things are about to be wrapped up here as the Tigers will move to one and one on the season. 54 seconds left in the ball game. 23-10 is our score. Tigers can just kneel on the ball twice and be done. What a sweet thing that would be. Different quarterback in the ball game for Grambling. It is. Is that Hickbottom? Three seconds left on the play clock, and they're going to get a pill. Oh, there was a jump right there. And who's going to be called for the jump? Will it be Northwestern? No, it's going to be delay game. They're trying to run guys in. Yeah, it won't matter at this point. I do believe Northwestern State is out of timeouts as well. Mm -hmm. Here's a give. Across the 15 to the 10 and out of bounds. And that is going to be Flowers. 
but stops the clock with 47 seconds. Oh, it's going to be a holding against Grambling. Coach Fowles not happy about that. That you was know, a good play. Even with the the younger guys in now, even though they substitute these other guys in, the coaches are not happy with what they've done over these last two on these last yeah. two plays. They are not happy with them. The referees actually had to yell at the coaches on the last play to get them off the field. They were still yelling at the players who were on the field. And here's a drive right, I should say here's a run right up the middle. 23-10 the score, 36 seconds remaining into the ball game. They'll have to run one more play. A victory formation. That's it. 24 seconds. And the Tigers are now 3-1 against Northwestern State all time with a 23-10 victory over the Northwestern State Demons. Congratulations to the Grambling Tigers. Their win here, first win at home here in 2017. And they'll try to go for number two next week against the Jackson State Tigers. We'll take a two-minute timeout, two minutes, and come back for our post-game show right here on the Grambling Sports Radio Network. Two-minute timeout. We'll be right back. <laughs> 